Yeah, so I'm closing in on five years at Palantir, joined just before COVID, which sort of set in motion my path at Palantir. Worked on a lot of emergency response during 2020. Did some supply chain workflows for the COVID PPE supply chain and then started working in utilities and, and have been there for the last four years. If you're curious how cutting edge tech is quietly transforming industries like utilities and construction, this video is a must watch. Learn how Palantir went from tackling COVID PPE supply chains to wildfire prevention and reindustrializing America with AI. It's a rare insider look at the future of innovation and why it matters to all of us. Yeah, well, five years around Palantir is actually probably a pretty long time, so that, that's awesome. When I joined Palantir and I saw the platform for the first time, I was like, where was this for the last four years? <laughs> so you've been here a while, but your background was data analytics. How did you end up in, in really the construction and utility space? So very typical, I think, Palantir story where we went, we went where we were needed. So we started in 2020 working with PG&E to become sort of the, the digital backbone for all of the operational turnaround. Worked on that project in a variety of different roles and then started our work with SoCal Edison, Southern California Edison, mm -hmm. putting in place a lot of similar wildfire mitigation practices that we had established as be best practice yeah. in the Bay Area. Isn't it fascinating how Palantir's adaptability allows its teams to pivot from emergency responses like COVID PPE supply chains to something as niche yet critical as wildfire mitigation? It really makes you wonder. How many industries are out there that still need this level of operational transformation? And then around 2021, with a couple other Palantirians, we saw sort of a need to bring these same platforms to the rest of the industry and, and sort of have grown our practice tenfold since. Yeah. And yet we're barely scratching the surface. There's a lot more that we can do with each utility, and there's a lot more utilities that have yet to work with us. I believe it's really important that we work with all utilities in the U.S., that we build a really, really valuable product for them so that they run more efficiently because all of the economy is downstream of utilities. And so if we can help them operate more efficiently, increase the capacity on the grid, build more efficiently, uh, be more productive, it has ripple effects across the economy. Yeah, I love, like, I mean, it comes back to the overall mission of like, well, how, how are we really going to reindustrialize, you know, the U.S.? It starts upstream with having the power to be able to do these things, to power the AI, to do the, you know, to do the reindustrialization, to build the other things. Like, that's all based on this, which is that overall mission of Palantir. And I love that you've got this big section right in the middle that you're helping drive that. That's pretty cool. The idea of reindustrializing the U.S., starting with utilities, is incredibly strategic. By focusing on foundational industries, Palantir is ensuring that every improvement has exponential benefits across sectors. This aligns perfectly with their broader mission of empowering industries to operate at their peak potential, creating long-term economic resilience. And it's really three things today. It's how do you build more capacity through construction much more effectively? Second is how do you upgrade the current infrastructure by spending every dollar more wisely in a more targeted way? And then third is operating the current state of the grid in the most reliable way. So we've been talking a lot about the ontology. Why is it valuable for utilities? For utilities, the ontology uh, enables the organization to look at the infrastructure, the assets on the infrastructure, the work that's been done on the infrastructure, the risk surrounding the infrastructure, whether that's weather, environmental risk from proximity of trees. Believe it or not, it's really hard to actually yeah. all of these, see all of these things and then be able to orchestrate decisions in real time on top of it. And so, and that's very extensible. You can bring in your SCADA system and then look at telemetry. Visibility into this, this ontology can support workflows across the organization, whether you're managing outages, whether you're managing communications with customers or you're managing how to upgrade the, the infrastructure. Yeah, oh, that's fascinating. I, I, the, the ontology really is the core of how you model how the world really is, not in a system language for a report. I think that's a differentiator from a lot of things and people don't understand that the power of the ontology is because you're modeling that ground truth that then enables all of these other use cases, these other things. Think about it. How can you truly upgrade or manage critical infrastructure without first understanding it at every level? The ontology provides that single source of truth, enabling workflows that adapt to real-world complexities. Isn't that the kind of technological foundation that industries like utilities have been waiting for? And along the way, we have to deal with bad data and imperfect <laughs> data, right? Yeah. Uh, but having the ontology gives us more information to work with. So we can sort of fill in the blanks sometimes because we have information geospatially that enables us to infer what oh. a missing data point could be, or we can reconcile different systems. For example, a, a common thing is 
SAP will have a record of the installation of a pole in the field, but another system will have the record of the retrieval of that pole in the field. So if you only look at SAP, you think that there's all these ghost poles in the field, <laughs> but they're not there anymore. So having the visibility across these enterprise systems is actually really hard for utilities yeah. and extremely differentiated. So one of the hardest things about new technology is actually the people, the change management. So what does user adoption look like? Well, you know, in those high stress, high consequence environments, the bar is very binary. It either works and it works better than anything established or it doesn't work. And that's the bar that we hold ourselves to. So every use case we put out to production has to meet that bar. Now, these use cases are so valuable in the day-to-day -day, day -day life of our users that they're the ones creating the waterfall of use cases that influences the roadmap. So a customer like pg e that has been with us for five years, close to five years, has more than 100 use cases wow. in production. How do you solve a problem like bad or incomplete data when it's the backbone of every decision you make? The ontology's ability to infer and reconcile missing information isn't just convenient, it's revolutionary. And when you think about utilities juggling fragmented systems like SAP, isn't it clear how critical a unified, real-time perspective is for eliminating inefficiencies? Another one of our flagship utilities customers in the, in the Pacific Northwest has put 30 use cases in production in their first 12 months with us. Wow. Wow. That's pretty impressive. There's a lot going on in the utility space. Like, what's the impact? What are we doing? Uh, utilities are at the center of a lot of trends in our society, right? Yep. And so our role in this industry is, is really upstream of the whole of the whole economy. And that's why we started working on transmission construction. And, and our pod is spanning utilities and construction because we were exposed to that problem space coming out of utilities. Yeah, that's very cool. And in the last two years with large language models, we've seen the construction industry become a really important vertical for us. LLMs are particularly applicable for them because the whole industry runs on documents, oh. PDFs. So AIP has been really, really levered in helping get this information into the ontology, having those documents talk to each other through the ontology network. And so we're seeing use cases across the life cycle of construction that are leveraging AI. Palantir's ability to integrate AI with industries like construction isn't just about improving processes. It's about fundamentally changing how those industries operate. By ontologizing documents, they're transforming raw data into actionable insights, allowing entire sectors to leap forward in productivity and collaboration. Wow, so it's not just, oh, I'm gonna extract some information using OCR, it's really understanding what's in those documents, ontologizing the relationships between things that is unlocking the value. So then like, once you have that, like, what are what are people doing with it? So I got all this unstructured data. Now I have access to it. Like, what's the use case that people then leverage with that? It's really two things. It's getting the data out of these unstructured data formats and then automating the proce the processes that rely on them. Whether it's automatically sourcing the best supplier, negotiating quotes down, producing quotes, producing engineering documents with AI, always with a human in the loop yeah. approach. It spans the whole the yeah. whole life cycle. Yeah, you bring up a point because I hear a lot of times like, oh, my data is not ready for AI. But I would I would argue, and it sounds like you're arguing, making that same argument is actually that's the perfect time to use generative AI and AIP is to actually make sense of these things because you can start to infer and fill in gaps. I think there's a lot of paralysis because of bad data, right? <laughs> yeah. And I think the first step is understanding what's actually bad. And the ontology is, is able to shine a really bright spotlight on, on the gaps and the bad data. Yeah. And then you can actually have a, have a plan of action to... Yeah. help uh, improve the quality of your data. Yeah, there's no better way than trying to actually use it to figure out what's what's wrong with it. Exactly. Yeah, it's cool. The construction industry is really interesting from that perspective because yeah. there are notorious laggards in, yeah. in tech adoption and they've, for, for the most part, haven't jumped onto the data warehouse, data lake house cycle of analytics. Oh, really? So with all this unstructured data, what happens when you can finally access and make sense of it? The potential is massive. But here's the real question. If generative AI can help fill the gaps and make sense of imperfect data, how much faster can industries like construction catch up with the rest of the economy? Could this be the breakthrough that brings lagging sectors into the modern age? And LLMs and the current cycle is a great way to catch up and shortcut all of that and not have to invest in a data warehouse, a data lake house, but immediately go into operational use cases that are applicable to the construction industry, whether that's estimating the cost of a project, scheduling, managing oh. suppliers and subcontractors. Well, I learned a lot today, like the importance of utilities and not only playing like what I'm interested in with AI, but just a part of our whole country, our daily lives, it's really critical. And I love that we're using AI to help the utilities be more efficient, to help make sure we have the power for everything else we need. So thanks for making the trip. 
By applying LLMs directly to operational tasks like cost estimation and scheduling, the construction industry can leap over the traditional hurdles of tech adoption. This represents a faster, more efficient way to unlock value without the lengthy setup of data lakes or warehouses, transforming the industry from the inside out. Palantir's approach to leveraging AI, particularly large language models, in industries like utilities and construction is revolutionizing how these sectors operate. By bypassing traditional data management setups and directly applying AI to real-world use cases, they're enabling faster decision-making, improved efficiency, and smarter operations. Whether it's optimizing utility grids or streamlining construction processes, Palantir's technology provides critical infrastructure with the tools to enhance productivity, bridge data gaps, and drive long-term economic resilience.